Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something that gets requested quite a bit on my comment section, an Oni mask. Now, uh, Oni mask, it's three letters. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, words are hard. I get requested this one quite a bit and I kind of feel like I've made some masks that technically would fit under this category but definitely have never taken the more traditional approach. Um, I am going to take two Halloween masks that I got last year, real cheap ones, and kind of combine them together and then cover that with a thermoplastic, much like Warbler, and um, yeah, see what I can come up with. So today I am making a custom Oni mask from references in my imagination using some random materials and bits. Let's get to building. I keep a large tote of masks like these in my prop material storage. Even if I don't necessarily like the mask, they can easily be altered to make what I want. I wanted a full face Oni mask, so I needed something to fill the top portion of this cheap samurai mask, I think is what they labeled it as. I start by trimming off the parts of the top part that I don't need. Then I rough up the plastic so that I can get some super glue on it to hold. This is not a strong enough bond to keep them together but it is to hold them there long enough that I can drill some holes to pop some rivets in. I do my best to keep it relatively even as I make the modifications to the mask but it will all get covered with thermoplastic later anyways. This is Cosplay Flex, not a sponsor. The generic brand that my local hobby store carries, kind of like Warbler. Basically, the material is a thermoplastic resin mixed with a wood flower filler. It is rolled out into sheets, and once heated up, you can pretty much shape it into anything you want. My cheap mass will act as a starting point for me to build off of. I heat up the thermoplastic and push it over the mass, covering the whole surface so that I have extra space and surface to tack more of the stuff onto. Basically, I'm trying to get it to adhere to the other plastic. Then I can go back and heat it up in patches to smooth out wrinkles and get my base shape good looking.
Now that my base is relatively smooth, I am ready to start adding details. I wanted to add some ridges as a decorative element circling around my eyes and then kind of looping back onto the forehead. I heat up the thermoplastic to make little snakes and smush them onto the base. When both parts are heated, this stuff sticks together like glue. I'm looking at a bunch of Google references and pulling little here and there that I like to add to mine. I don't have an idea in mind, just going with the flow and making it up as I go. One typical feature of most Oni masks are the presence of horns. It can vary from one to a bunch, uh, so we're just gonna go with the standard two. Instead of using up all my thermoplastic, I am making the base of my horns with foil or aluminium and push the plastic over the top. Since it takes on the shape of what I am pushing it onto, I don't want a bunch of little divots all up in my horns. So the duct tape is put on just to kind of smooth out those rough edges of the foil and then it gets enveloped in thermoplastic. I had many thoughts about the possibilities for the eyes. I kind of liked them how they were. One, I could let the holes stay open. I could put LED lenses in them, put cloth in there, leave them blank, or the various other amount of materials to obscure my eyes while wearing it. A lot of reference images that I found had most of the mask eye sockets covered with only the pupil holes for you to peer through. So that's kind of what I went with. I build up my shape on some plastic spoons and then shove them into the backside so that they cover the hole. Once I had the shape and cooled, I drilled a hole to look through. I'm going to start the paint job with a gray automotive primer to fill in any gaps. I oh, know, no plasti did. I want a metallic color for parts of the mask, so a base color of black spray paint will get me started. Like I said before, I am pretty much doing this as I go making decisions on the fly, which sometimes is, is pretty fun. I still haven't decided what exact color scheme I want to do yet, but I started with a Spanish copper rub and buff. Then I hit the edges with some antique gold to kind of help the details stand out a little. I know I don't want to go with a traditional paint job, so this will be a nice starting point. You just get the rub and buff on a chip brush and loosely drag your brush over. I 
I think I want to make it green for the bottom half and the horns. I know that's definitely not a traditional color scheme for an Oni mask, but it's the colors I want to use. My first coat of Platifex acrylic paint, I spread on super thin because I was thinking about making it kind of still metallic-y. While I do think it's a cool painting treatment, I'm not really feeling it for this particular mask. So I put on another coat to make it a little more solid. Once it's all dry, I dirty it up with some black washes. In my current design, there's a big gap of wrinkles on the forehead. I thought about putting a symbol or something in there, but didn't find anything that I liked. Another common occurrence in Oni masks is the demon to have an extra eye right smack dab in the middle of his forehead. So after my painting job was done, um, let's drill a hole and mess it up a little bit. Yeah. So I'm just going to hot glue a glass eye on the backside and then touch up paint the edges. At this point, the mask is a bit heavier than my normal build, so instead of using the typical elastic banding, I decide to rivet on an old belt as strapping. Since the layers of plastic are nice and thick now, it has plenty of structure to hold the rivets. I cut the buckle in and the end with the holes to length to rivet to my mask. Typically, you would hammer these parts together, but there's a slight slant to them, so it's a little bit hard to get a good angle, so I'm just going to use a flat pair of pliers. I mark the holes on my belt, punch out the holes, then rivet them together. I bought these fake old Japanese coins, which if the Google search has led me straight, is called a Fuhansen. Yeah, I know I'm butchering a lot of words today. And these were a common currency in the late 7th century. I don't remember what I initially bought them for, but I thought they had cool decorative embellishments, so let's put them on the strapping for my mask. I'm just going to rivet them on my belt in the same method as before. I got them off of Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, um, need to find something else to use these for because they're pretty cool. Any ideas? <laughs> Last thing to finish on the project is to glue in the material onto the eyes so that you cannot see the person's eyes when they are wearing it. I double over this sheer material and hot glue it to the surface. Since I do frequent work with hot materials, my palms aren't too sensitive to hot temperatures. You do want to be careful though when using a hot glue gun because of a lot of the permanent scars on the soft tissues like the backs of my hand or the mid shin have definitely gotten a couple of 
of battle scars from this liquid hot napalm glue singeing off the top layers of skin. And with that, we are finished. <laughs> finished here is the end result overall i think it turned out pretty good it is definitely one of the heavier things that i have built in a while the plastic masks that i started out with weren't that bad but adding that thermoplastic especially making the teeth solid like i did definitely add a lot of weight to it um Keep in mind, most of the things I make are out of foam and weigh less than half a pound. This may be two or three pounds total, uh, maybe a little bit more, but I like how it turned out. I think the little details are super cool, especially adding those little coins there at the end was a nice little touch to add something to the strap that I normally just put elastic on, but yeah. Maybe we'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull historical references and then kind of put your own spin on it and make something that's uh, hopefully going to intimidate your enemies for years to come. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. I'm, I'm going to let you put this one on. I'm, it's going to weigh you down a little bit, so just be, be aware that it's, it's a bit heavy. So, All right, move your hair out of the way. There you go. All right. Oh, my God, you're so scary. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.